In this video, we consider stationarity conditions for an autoregressive model of order 2. We start out by considering an autoregressive model of order P. Note that in a previous video, we have shown that, that the autoregressive model of order P can be written in terms of this autoregressive polynomial theta L. Um, in particular, we have that theta L times yt is, is simply a, a constant delta plus some noise term uh, epsilon t. Theta as a function of z is a pth degree polynomial. We have that the characteristic equation for this model is simply that, that this polynomial should be equal to zero. This equation here has p solutions denoted z1 to zp, and, and these solutions we may also denote the so-called characteristic roots. Note in, in general that, that these uh, roots here may not be uh, real numbers, so they, they may in particular be complex. Uh, the root zj may be given as rj plus or minus uh, cj times the square root of minus 1. So here rj and uh, uh, cj are, are real numbers and then we have this the square root of, of minus 1 which you may recall is denoted the so-called imaginary number. The point is that, that these roots here contain important information about the, the properties of uh, the autoregressive model. Some of you may already be familiar with these uh, complex numbers. Uh, we will recall a few uh, important properties. If we have some complex number uh, zj, then we have the so-called modulus of, of zj, or the you may think about this as the absolute value. It, it is given by, by the square root of rj squared plus uh, cj squared. Moreover, we may also consider the, the inverse of, of zj, den denoted zj to the power of minus 1, and, and it is given by, by the following equation here. What is important for uh, our analysis is to consider this modulus of, of the characteristic roots because what we have shown in a, in a previous uh, video is that, that if this absolute value or this modulus of, of zj is, is greater than 1 uh, for, for all the characteristic roots, then we have that the, uh, the autoregressive model here of, of order p is, is stationary and weakly dependent. For a given uh, autoregressive model, uh, in order to, to, to check for, for stationarity, we should simply be, simply be able to, to find the solutions to this characteristic equation and then check if these solutions have modulus greater than 1. We will do that in particular for the autoregressive model of order 2 because this illustrates all the, uh, the, the main ideas. Now rec recall that the um, Autoregressive model of order 2 has a, a second de degree autoregressive polynomial. In particular, we have that the, the characteristic equation is given by this equation here. Given the two characteristic roots, Z1 and Z2, we may factorize uh, the, the polynomial. So it means that theta Z is, is simply 1 minus phi 1 times Z times 1 minus phi 2 times Z. Uh, where uh, phi 1 is, is given by the inverse of uh, the characteristic root z1 and, and likewise phi 2 is given by the inverse of z2. We have that this autoregressive polynomial is, is uh, invertible if these inverse characteristic roots have modulus less than 1 or equivalently as I just mentioned if the characteristic roots z1 and z2 have modulus greater than 1. And as I mentioned, uh, the, this AR2 process is uh, stationary and weakly dependent uh, whenever um, these characteristic roots have modulus greater than 1. For this particular AR2 case, we can actually write down the solutions or the, the, the characteristic roots. So Z1 and Z2 are, are given by uh, these two equations here. Um, and, and where we note that in particular these roots may be uh, complex. Note in, in terms of uh, stating these two solutions, we have uh, implicitly assumed that, that theta 2 
is it is, is different from zero. But recall here that if set two is is uh, actually equal to zero, then we we actually have an an AR one model. And in this case, we already know that that for for the AR one model to be stationary, we should simply have that that the absolute value of theta one is is less than one. Let us consider a quite interesting example. Con consider this AR2 model where the, the autoregressive parameter of order one, say uh, theta one, is, is equal to 1.3 and uh, the, the second order autoregressive coefficient is equal to minus 0.8. In this case, we can show that, that the set one, the first characteristic root is, is given by uh, by this quantity here. So it, it is a complex number. Um, and likewise, we have that set two is, is essentially the same, but where we have uh, replaced the plus here with a, with a minus. We can then check if, if this uh, process here is, is, is stationary. And what we do is that we can compute the, the modulus of set one and set two. And in this case, they are the same. And we take the square root of the, uh, the real part of uh, set one squared or set two squared uh, so that is uh, 13 divided by 16 and then we take the the square of the uh, imaginary part that so that is the, the square root of uh, 151 divided by 16 and we have that this uh, number here is around 1.12 which is greater than 1 so we conclude that uh, that this AR2 process here is is stationary and and weakly dependent what, what is quite interesting is that uh, recall for the uh, autoregressive model of order one, we did not allow the autoregressive coefficient to be equal to 1.3. Uh, in this case, for, for the AR1 model, we, we would have a, a non-stationary uh, series. So this means that, that uh, uh, having a, an AR2 model, we actually have some more flexibility in the sense that, that we allow for, for a greater autoregressive coefficients of order one and, and still have uh, stationarity. In, in general, we can actually figure out what should hold for, for theta one and theta two in order for, for these two characteristic roots to have modulus uh, greater than one. And this can be illustrated in the following figure. Particularly, we can show, but we will not do that here, that if the sum of the thetas are uh, less than one, if the difference between theta two and theta one is, is less than one, and if the absolute value of theta two is less than one, then we have uh, stationarity and weak dependence for, for this AR2 process. And we can simply make a, a draw of this uh, region for, for theta, theta one and theta two. Uh, and it is given by this triangle here. Theta one is plotted on the, the first axis and theta two is plotted on the second axis. Going back to the simple case where theta two is, is equal to zero such that we have an, an AR one model, then we have that, that theta one should simply lie between minus one and one. And this is the, the well-known condition for, for, for stationarity in this kind of process here. But what is quite interesting is that we can actually have larger values than one or, or smaller values than a minus one for the theta one coefficient if we just have some negative values for, for theta two. So intuitively this means that the values of theta one that exceed one in absolute value is actually possible uh, because we have this theta two coefficient to, to kind of compensate in order to still ensure uh, stationarity. Moreover, we can see here that, that in some regions of for theta one and theta two, we have um, real valued uh, characteristic roots for the characteristic equation and in some parts we have uh, complex roots. As an illustration, uh, consider the, the, the previous AR2 model where we had that theta1 was equal to 1.3 which is around uh, here and, and then we had uh, theta2 was uh, minus 0.8 so, so it is kind of around here and we have that this is in the stationary region and we had a complex uh, valued uh, characteristic roots. And this is also what we found theoretically. Thank you for watching this video.